the garden of new life. It was only a few days ago that we were witnesses to the trial, crucifixion, and death of Jesus. Today, oh how today is so different. It all began in a garden, a garden of life, a place of refreshment and renewal. Here, almost everything is green with life and growth. We read in scripture that both physical life and eternal life have their beginning in a garden setting. Eve, the mother of humanity, was conceived by God and brought forth in a garden. In fact, it was a lush and vibrant garden of comfort and sanctuary. Yet, because of an act of sheer disobedience, she and her husband Adam were expelled from the idyllic paradise. Paradise was now just a memory. On this Easter Sunday morning, we hear of another garden, a garden of eternal life made possible through our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, Jesus was crucified, dead, and was buried and rose again in a garden setting. Today, we are witnesses to this transformation, this transformed garden, a resurrection garden. Mary Magdalene, the first to enter the tomb, discovers that this garden is more than just a garden of memories. She discovers that it is more than just a cemetery. This is a garden of eternal life. Mary is no longer grief-stricken or panic-stricken. She is no longer beside herself with fear and worry. The very one she assumed to be dead is alive, and we are alive forevermore. Without him, there is no hope, no assurance of life eternal. With him, we can face tomorrow because he lives, all fear is gone, and we are provided with the blessed assurance that we will live with him in the heavenly garden of paradise forever and ever.
Good morning. morning. Well, seeing is believing. The gospel tells us Mary did not recognize Jesus at first, but thought he was the gardener, a caretaker. How we wonder could she have not immediately recognized him? After all, she had followed him and supported him and cared for him during the days of his earthly ministry. How could she not recognize the one who was so very near and dear to her? the one who chased the demons from her soul, healed her, and forgave her sins. Why, we ask, did she not recognize him? Well, before we are too hard on Mary, let's remember one thing. Jesus was different now. Jesus was transformed with a resurrected body that is both physical and spiritual at the same time. Let's remember that when Mary finally recognized Jesus, he cautioned her, do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. The same holds true for us today, as Paul has taught us. When we die, we are transformed and made like unto Christ's own glorious body. Because Christ Jesus was defeated, has defeated death, he is truly the victorious one. And by his victory, we are given the wonderful promise, because I live, you also will live.
the finale. After the ascension, the finale, the truth be told, after the ascension, there was no, nor is there any finale. Listen to what Jesus says in Matthew 28. Eugene Peterson's paraphrase goes like this. Go out and train everyone you meet far and near in this way of life. Marking them by baptism in the threefold name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you. I will be with you as you do this day after day after day after day, right up to the end of the age. Mark writes, then the master Jesus, after being, after briefing them, was taken up to heaven and he sat down beside God in the place of honor. And the disciples went everywhere preaching. The master Jesus working right with them, validating the message with indisputable evidence. Jesus did tell Mary not to cling to him at a particular moment, but only for that moment. If we, if you and I, are going to continue his work, we must cling now to him now and forever.
me say again how glad I am that you are here, that we are here together. This is actually, my son asked me uh, what was going on Easter Sunday morning, and I said to him, it's actually, and I, I guess I didn't make this as clear as I did last year, it's one service in three parts. It's one service in three parts. Sunrise was the first part. Actually, fellowship, the breakfast, is the second part of worship. And we did it that way because sometimes we forget that that part is as much a part of worship in the life of the church and scripture as anything else. And then the third part of worship to, to, today is the uh, main worship service. I want to thank uh, my friends for getting up early. Thank you, Randy, for once again outstanding work you do. Cam, thank you. Darius. Yes. I, I heard, I want to say this, uh, I, I went to D.C. last weekend and uh, we talked about Darius coming to sing and he, he sung the song you heard him sing. Uh, so sometimes I'm so lost with uh, titles. What's the title? Oh Glory. Oh Glory, that's simple enough. And uh, I said, uh, uh, there's, that'll work for Sunrise. And uh, that was incredible. Thank you, Randy, for uh, working with him and, and bringing that to us. So. We are ready to enter into um, part two of the worship experience in just a few minutes. It's not quite ready, it smells ready to me, but I don't think it's quite ready because we said 8.30, so please spend some time fellowshipping uh, together. And as we've already stated uh, earlier, um, Good Friday, the benediction will come uh, at the end of the 10 o'clock service. So go in peace. I hope to meet you. I'm going to be back there uh, with you, so I hope to have a, a chance to talk to you. Uh, God bless you. Amen.